Welcome back to the Dark Reading News Desk. I'm Terry Sweeney, editor with Dark Reading. I'm joined now by Reuven Harrison, CTO of Tufin. Reuven, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Terry. Cloud services, safe to say, are becoming pervasive for, for most enterprises. Why don't we start by just talking about how the advent of cloud affects how customers are approaching security management in general? Yeah, the, the cloud is great. Um, I mean, we, I've, I've um, created the small innovation team within Tufin, which is now focused on cloud native, and we use cloud only. So our only asset is the developer's laptops. Mm -hmm. Other than that, everything is in the cloud. And that's, if you think of cloud, the way it's supposed to be cloud native, that's how it's supposed to be, right? A lot of the enterprises are not there yet. They're still doing lift and shift. The biggest challenge is that on-prem, before the cloud, you could stick a big firewall in there and just simply not allow the application to communicate until you, you're, you're a security guy, until you're happy with it, right? Okay. The nice thing about the cloud is that developers control the full stack, including security. Okay. If you take away one of these parts of the stack, you, you take away the keys to the, the, last, uh, the last step that allows them to deploy an application, you've basically killed the agility, which is, that was the motivation to move to the cloud. Right. So that, that's the challenge in essence. How do you do security in, an, in a very agile, developer-owned stack, right? Okay. Still, while, while the cloud is supposed to simplify, it, it seems like many companies, many, many companies who, who start this transition to the cloud are still really struggling with it. So I actually wrote a blog about it because we just announced our, uh, our new secure cloud product a couple of weeks ago. And, um, so it, it ended up being a, a blog post about why, why companies fail to migrate to the cloud. And I don't know how true it is, but based on what I've seen so far, the main reason is that they think of cloud as yet another, yet another thing that they're used to from the old world. Yet another network, yet another VM, yet another something that you need to protect with the firewall, all of these things that you're familiar with from the on-premise, the traditional IT environment, if you just try to replicate them in the cloud, you're basically not building a cloud. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense to me, actually. So with that in mind, um, we've seen hybrid cloud implementations. We've seen implementations that involve multiple clouds. Uh -huh. It feels like this is only going to complicate or exacerbate the problem you've just described. What's, what's your sense of that? In the public cloud, there are three vendors that pretty much control the market, right? And they're all just about the same, right? Like one is better at some things, the others are better at other things, but they're all cloud platforms. They're all copying from each other. So mm -hmm. um, there's this new concept of multi-cloud, which is, I don't know if it's a marketing concept or if it's if it's if it has any real uh, uh, value, but it's the, it's the concept of when you're building an application, you're using various elements from different cloud. Um, so, for example, if Google is good at machine learning, for example, you may do your machine learning in Google. Okay. If um, Azure is good in I don't know what it's good in, like I don't know integrations with uh, Office 365, you'll use these services from there. Whatever, right? And your application is consuming services across the cloud. That's multi-cloud. And I've seen that mentioned by IBM, Red Hat. They're, they're using that a lot. Maybe VMware. Um, and also, you might be using services from your on-premise network. Um, that, that creates a lot of connections across all these environments. So it's difficult to control, yet it becomes a bigger problem for security. And hybrid cloud is the older term that is basically just, I have on-premise and I have cloud. That's hybrid. Okay. Okay. But larger customers like ours, the enterprises, they have everything. They have all three public clouds and the private cloud and everything in between. So customers are going to make their cloud choice based on, as, as you've just described, the functionality that they need, the, mm -hmm. the, the specific technical requirements, you know, the strengths that the cloud providers themselves deliver. Exactly. Does, does their does the structure of, of, of their cloud materially affect the security approach that they then pick? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's a big difference between the different cloud platforms, the public cloud platforms, 
in terms of security like one has security groups, the other one has application security groups, and the third one has firewalls. But they're all essentially the same thing. It's, it's, a, it's a virtual firewall in the cloud, right? Um, the, the challenge is not technical. It's not in these differences between. The challenge it's, is, is, again, coming back to cloud, if you use cloud as another on-prem network, as an extension to your on-prem network, you're just not going to see the benefits. You're not going to realize the benefits of the cloud. So the challenge is to consider cloud as something different. As I, I always call it cloud native. So when you're building an application in the cloud, you need to build it for the cloud. You can't just take an old application and put it in the cloud. And the only way to do that is by um, hiring developers. Because the cloud was built for developers, developers who understand the cloud. If you just take a, like an executive who says, we have a cloud for a strategy, that's just not enough because nobody knows how to use the cloud. But if you bring in developers, they'll, they'll figure it out, they'll teach other people, they'll spread the, 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 the methodologies that are needed in the, in the organization and eventually the organization will learn how to use the cloud properly. Okay, so in addition to bringing in developers, like what, what other steps could customers take to, again, improve both their experience of the cloud, but also mm -hmm. the security of it. So again, the same, exactly the same concept. In, in cloud, you need to do security like security is done in the cloud, not like security is done on-premise. So if you're just going to do the same security in the cloud, you might, you might just abandon the cloud and go back on-prem. If you want to do security in the cloud, you need to use, um, you need to allow the developers to, to, um, to develop quickly with agility, with velocity. You can't take control away from some part of the cloud. We have customers that are saying, developers can own the entire stack except for the security groups. Security groups will do tickets, will we'll manage them through access requests. And I don't think that works in the long term. That might work in the short term, but in the long term you want to give developers full control. And there's this term that works pretty well which is called guardrails, which means you define a policy and as long as the developers are adhering to that policy, as long as their applications are being deployed within these guardrails, they can move as fast as they like using CI, CD, and all these good things. But if they try to go beyond the guardrails, that's when you'll stop them. Okay. So that, that's the trick. The, don't put a firewall and block them by default. Allow them to, to work by default. Stop them only if they, if they go beyond the, the, the guardrails. Let's shift gears slightly. Um, Kubernetes and container technology is obviously also ascendant. Um, what do you see as some of the drivers for Kubernetes adoption? Yeah, so Kubernetes is another like cloud on steroids, if you like. <laughs> That's the way I think about it. It's like even more uh, abstracted away from infrastructure. Sometimes I have this slide, I show it in presentations. I, I call it the, the shift from IT to no IT. Right, IT like ten years ago, hundred percent of our in, of our stack was IT. In the cloud, ideally, hundred percent of your stack is software. There is no IT. Right. So the evolution starts from software that is running on uh, mainframes or in, uh, bare metal, VM, VMware. So abstracting away the the machine from the the hardware, containers, and then Kubernetes, which is a container orchestrator. Then maybe uh, serverless, Lambda functions, these kinds of things. Um, so Kubernetes is almost at the edge of this evolution towards no IT. And the magic about Kubernetes is that it allows developers to focus on software and not on infrastructure. Ruben, great stuff. You've given us a lot to think about with regard to cloud and Kubernetes. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. We've been talking to Ruben Harrison, CTO of Tufin. This has been Terry Sweeney for the Dark Reading News Desk. Thanks for joining us.